Hello hunters, thanks for joining me again today. Whiskey Hunter here at the Linen Closet with you. This, oh, wow. This is a sample bottle that I uh, reviewed the review before last, so it's been about a week. This is the Springbank 30 year that we uh, did a while ago. Do any of you Wow, what a great nose. I can't wash this bottle out yet. You know, after I poured it, I noticed there was a drip in it still. I mean, there still is. I don't think you can, eh, maybe you can see it. But uh, I can't let this go. The nose is so good. It's just so unbelievable that I just want to keep this. I mean, never find a bottle. I'm searching for it, but... Um, if I were to wash this out, I, I might never have this aromatic again. Oh, it's like heaven in a bottle. I'm going to keep this and nose it at my leisure. I can't be the only one that does this. If you do, comment below. Um, so, the hunt today... Um, this comes from um, stopping by convenience stores. I was on a job out of town, and I don't know what I went in for. Breath mints, soda, something. In any case, I noticed behind the counter, uh, there, well, there really wasn't much liquor there. No high-end liquor, uh, at least uh, what I'm paying attention to, which is... Uh, whiskey for the most part scotch and, and some bourbons for some reason when I'm looking for bourbons or when I find bourbons that are older um, I don't know why but they're on the bottom shelf uh, and as were these so when you're there paying for something take a little bend over the counter look on that bottom shelf and see what you might find I found here a, this is an early times. I immediately knew when I looked at this label. Now, I've never drank early times before, um, but I have had old bourbon that's just unbelievable. I mean, some of these things are, are going for hundreds and hundreds of dollars today. In any case, this, uh, I knew the label was old. You can see the price on here is $5.55, and it's got the tax stamp still on it. Um, and and uh, what am I going to do? Leave it on the shelf for five dollars and fifty-five cents. Some of this old bourbon is amazingly good. Old Crow from the seventies and early eighties. You would think you're drinking a five hundred dollar bottle of uh, bourbon. It's it's unbelievably good, sweet and succulent. It's so good. So how you tell the age of a lot of older bourbon bottles is simply by looking on the bottom of the bottle. Now this says right over here 19 well it says 83. The bottle date is 1983. In most cases that is also when this was bottled. So how about that? Early times 1983. On that same trip next to it were these bottles. This is a old tailor. These are uh, going for a lot of money on the secondary market. I traded a 72 um, old tailor. Mm. Oh, Springbank 25 2004 bottling. That's a hell of a trade. Um, this was probably $4. This is another old tailor I found, and this is older too. It's not the new label. You can see the difference between the two labels. This was sitting there too, and if this is this is 200 mil. This, well, this is 200 mil. Excuse me. This one. This one is larger. Uh, this is a 19 uh, or 2003 bottling of old tailor, and this was seven. 
789 so um, I grabbed those and I'll probably taste them one day and do a review here as a matter of fact I've got a number of bottles that um, you know have been gifted to me when people don't know what to buy you and they know you drink whiskey they don't know if it's bourbon or scotch and they really don't know what they're buying you well you get gifts and many times they're not bottles you'd normally drink um, and I have a number of these bottles but we're gonna we're gonna uh, taste them and do a review on them coming up soon so anyway those are those uh, finds those hunts that I found and uh, keep your eyes open bottom shelf usually to the right why I don't know today we're going to taste um, a whiskey that I actually opened the bottle and poured about uh, an hour ago half an hour ago and here's the bottle opening here And we're back and here's the glass so now you see it's the Glen Farkless 17 year um, colors beautiful it is a golden raisin color a little darker maybe there's no color added in this uh, Farkless 17 year um, I'm a big fan of Glen Farkless I especially love the family casks they are considerably more in price, but boy, are those bottles good. I mean, just amazing drams. And I believe I did a buy it now before on uh, the Glen Farkless 25 year, one of the best bangs for the buck you're going to find. And I, I believe that pricing is going to go up. It's gone up. It was uh, 125 in places. Now it's one. 50, 160. I think you'll see it going up more even so as the next year or two uh, come about. We'll see an increase in that. It's a great whiskey. But here we have the Glen Farkless 17, 43% ABV. There's no color added. I think there is some chill filtration, but there is no color added. It's mostly first fill X sherry barrels. It's a space side. This is a independent family-owned distillery by the Grants. I've met George Grant. As a matter of fact, I have a 40-year Glen Farkless. He signed for me uh, when I got it. I also met him a couple years ago at a tasting at a uh, whiskey fest where this hat came from. Let's look at the legs on this. Um, they're running down. Some of them are taking a little longer to beat up. This looks like it's going to be a little bit oily. They're just now dropping. Pretty good viscosity for a 17-year-old. You know, um, Glenn Farkless has the largest stills in Speyside. And all of their whiskey is stored in Dunnage warehouses, uh, most of them being built in the 1800s. And most uh, warehouses today are either dunnage or racked warehouses. In fact, most of them are racked where you're going to get, um, you know, 12 stacks, 10, 12, 13, 14 stacks high of barrels, where at dunnage, they only stack them three high. And dunnage warehouses are um, typically uh, earth floors. Um, the walls are usually stone or brick with slate roofs and this allows for more air movement amongst the barrels it also um, minimizes uh, seasonal changes more so not as dramatic in, in the changes and it's said 
by some that it actually uh, dunnage warehouses tend to produce a better quality malt than uh, rick warehouses you be the judge on the nose well there's not much uh, uh, alcohol for it on the nose it's got your 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 typical um, farkless aromatic of sherry um, It's kind of uh, muted over the 25 year. I have not had the 21 year, um, but I have had the 25, the 30. So orange peel on the nose. There's a beautiful oak and vanilla aroma to it. Maybe marshmallow. Um, uh, a lightly toasted croissant, French pastry-ish. There's a light smoke there. This has been sitting uh, probably 35 minutes at this point. There's uh, uh, dried fruits, figs, and dates. There's a nice maltiness to it. I also um, am picking up some pineapple. It's not that old of a whiskey being seven, well, 17 years. I mean, that's still a long time to be in a cast, but you can almost um, pick up the aromatic of the earthy quality of the Dunnage Warehouse in this aroma. I'm also getting some nuts, maybe hazelnuts with it. Really nice nose. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have um, the punch that the older Farklisses do or the uh, family cask, which is really just um, takes it to another level on the palate. It's tongue coating. There's a little bit of astringency from the, uh, I would say the age, but it's still 17 years, but there's a little astringency to it. There's citrus, the orange, some lemon. Um, maybe some allspice cinnamon and and cloves those dried fruits are there the dates plums let's try another sip It's oily. It's a nice mouthfeel. It's drying now. A lot of times I don't get that uh, on the first taste. The dryness didn't come about till the second. So it's, it's drawing the moisture out of my gums and my cheeks right here towards the front. The dryness is settling down now. I feel it more up here now. It's nice. Really nice. Let's try it with a drop of water. See what this does to our 17-year-old. Okay.
Let's see what we get here. Well, I think it's uh, really, it's muted um, the aromas for me. At 43%, I may, it may have taken two drops just now. And of course, with the amount of juice I have in here, it's dropped it down, I'm guessing maybe to 35%. It's it's taken away too much of the impact. Let's let's go uh, taste it. I get even a little more stringency with the water. Um, it's got more, um, it's creating more of a textured feeling in my, uh, around my gums and my lips. Not so much drying, just uh, tingling. Um, I get a mild chocolate, a mild dark chocolate. Uh, there's some, um, morning blend coffee notes to it a light coffee and the raisins it's got a um kind of a pine taste to it maybe i'd call that herbal herbal it's good it's a lot different than this glenn farkless which is uh, 15 year 1990. I think I tasted this early on in my reviews. You can see the color of that is crazy dark. I mean, well, this is much, much darker than uh, the one we just tasted. This one is bottled in 2005. It's 47% too. I'm going to rate this at a, I think an 88. It's, it is very good. It's not quite in the 90s. It needs a little more age to it. The 25 year old and up I'd put in there. One day I'll get an opportunity to try the 21. Well, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you enjoyed this review, let me know by clicking the like button and please share this with your friends if you think it might be something they'd be interested in. I will see you next time for another review and another story in the linen closet. Take care now.